When you think of curry, Japan might not be the first country that springs to mind, but if you've been to Japan, you know that Japanese curry is a thing unto itself. It's unique in the world of curries, made quite unlike any other curry that you know of. But here's how to make a Japanese beef curry. Curry in Japan actually has its origins in India, but it didn't come directly from India through to Japan. It came via England through the British Navy. So when you have Japanese curry, it's about as far removed from Indian curry as you could ever imagine. It's made in a completely different fashion. It starts with making a roux, kind of in the French style, except it has curry flavorings to it. So butter, flour, and a bit of curry powder in there as well. And then there's our ingredients. We've got some beef, We've got some vegetables here, and they're actually cooked separately from the curry. So the curry sauce is always made in a French style, and then the ingredients are stirred through it at the end. I'll explain why a little bit later. We've got some seasonings to go here, and then a couple of condiments to go on the side of the curry at the end of it. The first thing we've got to do though, because it takes the longest, is get this beef cooking. I've got some beef chuck here. It's a thick stewing cut. You know, you want to cook this for a while, so this is going to have to go into a pot for about an hour. Just want to cut this into bite-sized pieces, Fry it off until it's browned, and then put about a litre and a half of water on top of, this is about 1.3 kilograms of chuck steak, and boil that until the meat is very, very tender. About an hour and a half to two hours. the beef simmering away, but I should mention that that is a lot of meat for a Japanese curry. I like a lot of meat in the curries, I suspect you do too, which is why I've put sort of 1.2 kilos in there, around 150 to 200 grams per person. If you're in Japan, you'd be looking more like 50 grams per person. It is not a culture that eats a huge amount of meat. It'd be more weighted towards these other ingredients, these vegetables. Now, what I need to do with these is just peel the potatoes and carrots, break these shimeji mushrooms into smaller pieces and chop up my onion. The way I want to cut these vegetables is a style in Japanese known as rangiri, or a disordered cut. What it is, is a rolling cut where you make angled slices into a vegetable while continuously rolling it over. What that gives you is, as disordered cut might give away, a selection of random chunks that are all the same size. This gives you a difference of textures, difference of shapes, but they all cook at the same rate. So I'll do that for the carrots and also for the potatoes as well. When you're doing a rolling cut with a rounder vegetable, you just want to cut that into sort of larger batons first. And the shimeji, I just want to break that into smaller pieces. And the onion into thick slices. The beef's been going for about hour and 15, hour and a half now, so it's really nice and tender. You just test it with a fork or pick up a bit, and put it in your mouth, and you should know that it's the consistency that you want. So it's time to put in our root vegetables and let that simmer again for another 15 to 20 minutes so that the root vegetables soften as well. Now we're nearly at the point we're gonna start making the curry, I promise. But I just want to make the rest of the seasonings that are going to flavor and season our curry roux. The roux is very simple. It's just flour, butter, and some curry powder. You can add some chili to that as well if you want it a bit hotter. But our seasonings are some tomato ketchup, soy sauce, and Worcestershire sauce. And the one that you might not expect is an apple. A Japanese curry has a lot of sweetness to it. It's, it's a smooth curry roux with sweetness, often from fruit or from ketchup, things like that. So I'm gonna peel the apple and grate it. You could use a box grater, of course, but I'm gonna use the Japanese grater that I have and just grind the apple. It will oxidize, it'll turn brown, but that's gonna add a bit of color to our curry as well.
got our seasonings, and we've got our ingredients for the roux. Now, I know you're gonna ask what kind of curry powder should I use, but it really doesn't matter. Of course, different curry powders are gonna give you a different flavor profile. I guess what you want is something that is closest to an English style curry powder. Remember, this is a dish that came on British naval vessels back, you know, 150 plus years ago. So I'm using regular old Keen's curry powder. Some of the favorite brands in Japan are Indian curry or S&B curry powder, but anything that you want to use is completely fine. You can use a, a mixture of curry powders. You can use some curry powder, some garam masala. It's not really a term of art curry powder. This one it is quite light. It's not particularly strong and spicy. It's not particularly hot either, but of course you can add other things to it. Come up with your own blend if you want to, but the type of curry powder is not hugely important for what you're trying to achieve. So let's get over and start making our roux. So you may ask, if we're making a roux and then we're gonna stir through the ingredients that we've boiled separately, why don't we just boil the ingredients together with the roux like you would for a regular Indian style curry? Well, it's not an Indian style curry, it's a Japanese style curry. And Japanese stews tend to wanna to preserve the original texture and flavor of the ingredients that go into them. So rather than having all of this curry flavor absorbed by each one of the vegetables that go in there, in a Japanese curry, you want to bite in and taste carrot distinct from the curry flavor. So you've got different flavors in one kind of stew. We're gonna taste beef, we're gonna taste curry, we're gonna taste carrot, potato, mushroom, onion, and all of those things should really be quite separate. I guess it's a philosophical difference between a Japanese stew and a Western stew or an Indian curry, but it is a wonderful result. The vegetables are softened now, so I'll strain those off, reserving the stock. The reason I've boiled this in water is because we've kind of made our own stock to make the curry with. If we were using chicken or even just vegetables, maybe I'd want to actually use stock to make the curry base. But because we've boiled the vegetables, we kind of have our own beef and vegetable stock that's gonna go into making the curry roux. So to get started, first in with butter and flour. I wanna make a blonde roux, so I don't wanna cook this too much. You can make a brown roux if you want to and cook this until you're getting a really good amount of color into the butter and into the flour there as well. But a blonde roux is totally fine for my purposes because I want a kind of a lighter colored curry. When the flour has been cooked out, I add in my curry powder. And now I can add in, sort of a little at a time, the stock that we made from boiling our beef and our vegetables. Just a little at a time and keep stirring that to take out all the lumps. If you add it all in at once, you're gonna get a lumpy curry. When the curry's looking like the consistency you want, we'll add in our seasonings, ketchup, soy sauce, Worcestershire sauce, the grated apple, and then our reserve vegetables, just the shimeji mushrooms and the onions as well. I'll cook all that off for about 10 minutes covered until the onions and mushrooms have a chance to soften. Now to just put in the reserved meat and vegetables and stir to coat it in that curry sauce. There's a couple of, I guess, condiments, garnishes, I don't know what you'd really call it, but a classic for curry. The first is fukuzinzuke. It's a pickle named after the seven lucky gods that came from China to Japan. The second one is rakyo. Rakyo is, I guess, similar to onion or garlic, and it's pickled in quite a, a sweet and sour pickle. And the tartness of these accompaniments are, are really kind of necessary when you've got a Japanese curry. So if you don't have hold of these, think about some other pickles or fresh vegetables or something, something with a little bit of freshness and tartness that you can put with your curry to cut through that rich curry roux. Now for the plate. So a bit of rice, a bit of curry, Arakyo, fukujinzuke, makes a perfect Japanese beef curry. <laughs> 